Should we get Welcome. started? I don't know if everybody's here. I don't see, I see seven people, but there's a lot more people on Facebook, I think. So this is the first ever virtual foodie walk in downtown Fort Collins. Welcome. Groundbreaking, history making, whatever you want to say. I'm Trish O'Neill. I own the cooking studio in Fort Collins. Our job is to encourage and engage you to cook from scratch, enjoy it, have fun, have a blast while you're cooking, to do that no matter what your age is or your skill level, and also help you weave your home cooking into your everyday life instead of just have it be a special occasion, which most people are doing these days. So hooray for us. Um, today, we have a great panel of super foodies for you, and we're very excited about it. Um, they're going to share their ideas, their recipes, their kitchens in some cases, and their wisdom about food. Um, but first, to get started, you need to know that there is a door prize. And there's no door, but we're still going to give a door prize. And it's a gift basket of that's worth more than $125. Gift basket of gift cards from downtown Fort Collins, worth more than $125. The way you get that is if you're on, um, if you're on the Zoom link, the chat is below, and you put your whole name, first and last, and your email address in the chat. Um, Anyhow, get that to us, and then um, at the end of the presentation, we'll, we'll give you, we'll be drawing a person, and that person gets the gift basket. So we're very excited that we have such a great gift basket for everybody. If you're watching this after and it's recorded, you lose, you lose out. Sorry, we don't have it for you. Um, so if you have any questions or comments or um, whatever, feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, let us know what it is and um, we'll bring it up with everyone. So if we're ready to go, I'm gonna introduce our first presenters from the cupboard, Jim Hewitt and Michael. And the cupboard, let me just tell you a little bit, is a second generation family operated business and it's been inspiring kitchens and homes since 1972. In fact, the first sale they had was three wooden spoons for 95 cents. But since then, they've grown. It was founded by Carrie, and now his son Jim owns it. Jim, you can wave if you want. And uh, it's grown into the one of the largest independent kitchen and home stores in America. So we're really proud to have them. The other thing to tell you, if you haven't been to the cupboard, which I'm guessing most of you have, but if you haven't, the staff there is extremely knowledgeable and so helpful that most of them have worked there more than 10 years. And Jim will be the first to tell you that the staff and the team there is one of the exceptional qualities of the cupboard. They're open, just to tell you, they're open um, Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, and Sundays 11 to 5. And I think we got the uh, website put up on the chat, but it's www.thecupboard.net. So their website's open 24 hours a day, of course. So I'm gonna send it over to Jim and Michael and uh, let you go to it. Trish, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Great, we were having some audio issues, so. Yeah, I'm Jim Hewlett, owner of The Cupboard, father of three, here with Michael Bowles. Cult buyer for The Cupboard, father of two. And we're so excited to be a part of this first ever live foodie talk. So thank you all for joining us. Um, you might be a parent who has recently received news that uh, your kids will be starting uh, school remotely. So they will be home more than usual. So we are here to give you something to do with your kids. And at the cupboard, we always believe that getting kids into the kitchen early is so important to get them comfortable, to uh, give them skills that they can use your know, whole life, uh, but also to have fun. And that's what this recipe is. It's a way to get your kids into the kitchen with you, involved in the food that you're making, and having fun together. So. 
we'll be showing you how to make zucchini tots. And I'm going to pass it over to Michael. So Wait, we have I have to say zucchini tots. Yay, I love zucchini tots. Good zucchini tots. Um, so we have this recipe on our website. Um, and it's really simple. If you are looking for a healthy alternative versus frozen tater tots, um, this is a good way of getting some of the, those zucchini that are coming out of the garden right now, high in potassium, B6, vitamin C, and it's a good chance to get your kids in the kitchen. They can get their hands in there. They can shred up the zucchini. Um, lots, of, uh, lots of fun and a safe, uh, not a whole lot of sharp things going on. Um, so let's jump right into it. Uh, zucchini. You want to uh, get a shredder, medium shredder, and shred two cups, a packed two cups um, of zucchini. And of course, I've got all this stuff all ready to go. So easy shredding, okay? Next ingredient is gonna be panko breadcrumbs, half cup of panko breadcrumbs, half cup of freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano. And I've got a different shredder for that. Um, it's a finer shredder so that it'll um, melt in as it cooks in the oven. And um, this works great. So Michael, you can also do like, if you have one of those square cheese grater things that has different holes on different sides, could you use that? Absolutely. If you've got the kids in the kitchen and that's more of a stable thing for them to be able to use, absolutely. Um, I like these uh, just because they've got longer handles. So you can set it across the bowl um, and it's got a little um, tread down here at the bottom. So it's easier to shred directly into the bowl. But yes, a box grater would be fantastic. Uh, so where are we at? two cups zucchini packed in, uh, half a cup of panko breadcrumbs, half a cup of um, Parmesan cheese, salt and pepper. Um, you can grind about a half teaspoon um, of each into your mixture. Uh, a tablespoon of olive oil. And one egg. Egg is going to be important because that's going to bind everything together. If you try to bake without the egg in there, it's going to be just kind of a, a goopy mess for you. Okay, so this is what we've come up with when we mix all those things together. And then another fun thing that we can do is instead of making top shapes, you can use cookie cutters. And we've got a myriad of cookie cutters here, small and large. Um, we chose a fish this time and a star. Word of warning, this is pretty thick, so you don't want to fill the whole thing up. Um, we found as we've been doing this recipe a few times that it'll come out more like a hush puppy or a fritter, um, which is fine. It, it was certainly tasty. All of these have been tasty when we've been testing these. Um, maybe fill it up about halfway. So instruct the kids to pack it down. I'll show you. Pack it into all the angles that are on the cookie cutter. Three fingers. Three you, have, you have that all sitting on the cookie sheet on parchment paper, right? On parchment paper, yep. Unbleached parchment paper, which we carry here, $8.99. Um, it really helps release um, so that it's not sticking to your pan. Right. We use parchment paper on all our cookie sheets every single time just because it saves our dishwasher so much effort. So that one was a little thick. That one's going to come more out like a hush puppy. But you can see these other ones that I've done ahead of time. They're a little bit flatter. Those are going to cook and be a little bit crispier. Um, and the star is about the same shape as a, as a regular tater tot anyway. 
Can um, I ask you another question, Michael? Yeah, it looks like you didn't peel the zucchini, right? You have all that really nice dark green in there. Absolutely. So you've got all the all the nutrients in there, and um, yeah, no need to do that at all. Fun and messy. All right. Um, we have um, we talked with Susan from Savory Spice. And she had told us that the Red Rocks blend of spice that you can get there would be delicious with this. Um, you can dip these in ketchup. We've got Cal Colorado Ketchup Company um, ketchup here. We also, if you want to fancy it up a little bit, we're doing a dinner party. Stonewall Kitchen, lemon herb aioli, delicious. So we're going to pop this in the oven. Um, we found that it take, takes a little bit longer than the recipe um, on our link. Um, about 15 minutes through, you want to flip them uh, so that it's getting evenly cooked. Convection would be great if you've got a convection toaster oven like the Breville uh, Smart Oven Air. Um, that would be fantastic as well. But you do want to flip a, it. That's a fantastic oven, by the way. I love the Breville. It's, it, you know, that fan, the convection in there really gets an even cooking on all of that. Um, and it does a good job. So 15 minutes on one side and then start watching maybe about 10, 15 minutes on the, on the other side. And I'm gonna pop this in the oven and it, uh, we can all wait for about 20 minutes. Are we gonna have the magic of television now? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. So here are our finished zucchini tops. And again, dipping sauce of your choice, um, whatever the kids like, if it's just straight ketchup. Again, you can fancy this up for a dinner party. You can put a dollop of sour cream on there, have some chai sticking out of it. Uh, you can use any type of cookie cutter you want, or you can make your own shapes. That's kind of part of the fun. Um, so yeah, that's zucchini tots, a great way to get your kids into the kitchen, bring the family together, take up some time uh, away from screen time, um, and they're delicious. <clears throat> Crunchy on the outside. Again, these really, they're maybe not, Maybe we shouldn't call them tots. That should be more of like a hush puppy, a zucchini puppy. Oh. Mm. Tasty? Very tasty. Uh, oh, no fair. We don't get to eat them. Chris, we will make sure to save you some. You can come by anytime. And sadly, on the virtual foodie walks, we don't get to taste everything. That's just very, very sad for us, but oh well. They might be cold later. But. <laughs> Again, it's real. It's a real easy recipe. It's real fun. Okay. Right? Well, thanks, you guys. We got to move on, but that was Thank fantastic. You, everyone. We love you. I want to say to anybody who's watching, forget Amazon. Go to the cupboard and buy your stuff local. What we do. Okay. Next. Oh, don't forget now. If you haven't, put your name, your name, and your full name, left first and last, and your email address in the chat, so that chat button is down there, um, so that you can be part of the drawing for the $125, more than that, gift basket of gift cards for downtown Fort Collins. Fantastic. Okay, next, we're going to Happy Lucky Sea House. Wave. Wave. Happy Lucky Sea House is a family operated business and with a mission to nourish your happy. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Your community connection and experience of great tea. Since 2009, George and Carrie Grossman, along with a dedicated team of leafsters, I love that, have been sharing how culture, lifestyle, health, and happiness boil down to just three elements, water, tea, and time. With a commitment to quality, selection, and community, Happy Lucky's Great Wall of Tea with over 200 loose leaf teas, will deliver a beverage to satisfy your soul, whether you're already a tea lover or new to the brew. 
So Happy Lucky's is open daily at the Old Town Tea House from 10 to 6, Monday through Saturday at Front Range Village from 10 to 6, and both locations have plenty of outdoor seating so you can relax and enjoy your tea. Um, the Always Open website is happyluckies.com, and they have store pickup. They have deliveries local to Fort Collins, and if you're um, out of town or you need it shipped, if your order's over $50, they'll ship it to you for free. So, George, we're going to hand it over to you and uh, hear about what you have brewing for us. All right. Thank you, Trish. Uh, thank you to all you foodie walkers and the foodie talkers enjoying uh, this evening. Um, we're going to make uh, iced tea fast and easy. Um, and so we'll just jump in and get started. Um, I picked a black tea this evening, uh, ginger peach, and uh, we're going to make 20 ounces. And so um, it's typical ratio is uh, one teaspoon per eight ounces. So today I'm going to do two and a half teaspoons to make 20 ounce final batch. And uh, this ginger peach is great. It also has some uh, marigold petals in it. It's a, it's a beautiful leaf. Let me see if you can see it in there. Um, it's a black tea and really nice big bits of, of ginger root, uh, which oh, looks grew up really fabulous. Nice. Yeah, so oh. it's a beautiful tea. And as soon as I open this tin, I get a really big hit of the ginger first, and then the peach just comes in and lingers really nice. I've got this really cool tea maker. It's called Ingenuity. And uh, um, I put the leaves in there. And um, I've already preheated some water. Uh, it's near boiling. And uh, I'm going to pour that directly in there. Um, this fellow's uh, tea maker is great because you can set the tea temperature, uh, the water temperature to whatever tea you're drinking. Um, so, you know, 140 degrees, 160, 180, up to boiling, whatever you want. But I got near boiling today. Ooh, got to start the timer. It's a three minute steep time. So we got that going. So, um, <clears throat> but uh, this, is a, this is a great tea. And so um, we'll wait and do that. We're gonna do it in this, uh, a flash chill method. So this is a martini shaker. And I'm gonna fill that up with some, some ice here. If you don't have a martini shaker, the cupboard has martini shakers. You can buy one there. So you can see I've got the uh, martini shaker pretty full and you can get these over at the cupboard. Um, and I'm sure they've got plenty of them. And I'm gonna put a little ice in my, in my glass as well. And I don't need that much because we're gonna flash chill it down there. So the key thing on this um, to make flash chill is I'm making 20 ounces, but I only put about 10 ounces of water in here. So the other 10 ounces is gonna come from the melted ice that's now gonna make it cold and icy all at the same time and get me about 20 ounces without diluting that tea. Um, so I got about 10 ounces in there. I didn't measure it, but I have measured it in the past. I know it's about halfway. While we're waiting for that, my second method that I use, and it's a little off key camera here, but it's in, a, uh, it's in a ice bath. It's called cold brewing. A lot of people have heard of cold brew coffee. You can cold brew tea as well. Um, it's a lot, it's a very fun way to drink tea. This is a, a little mechanism is called a steep and go. Um, and I use this, I, I fill it with water and I just let it sit in my refrigerator until I'm ready. A lot of times if I'm cutting the grass or doing something outside or ready for a road trip, it's already chilled in the refrigerator. Um, I put about two teaspoons in here and this little filter is you drink through the filter so you don't wanna try to stuff the tea leaves in there. And, uh, and I put it back in the refrigerator. So it's got cold water, it's got tea, and it's brewing with cold water. So it's a cold brew, um, and we'll taste that a little bit. I'm gonna tell you about the tea, because it's a great tea. So that tea that I'm cold brewing um, is from Nepal. It's called Himalayan Gold. It's from the Sandakfu region of uh, Nepal. And it's right over the border from Darjeeling in Northern India. So the flavor profiles, the terroir is, is fairly similar, um, but it's a black tea and black tea has caffeine. Um, let me show you the leaf here. It's a beautiful leaf. It's got nice tiny curls and there's a lot of uh, golden tips in it. So let's take a look at that if we can 
see it there. Oops, made a mess, but that's okay. I don't know if you can see it there. Um, but there's some nice golden bits in there, and those are the golden tips, and that adds to the nuanced flavor of the tea. Um, that's beautiful. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful tea. I mean, the, the, the key, cool thing about pure leaf teas, oh, there's our timer. Um, one of the fun things about pure leaf teas is just all the shapes and the things that they do in the processing. And uh, um, so we'll have to do another one of these when we talk about tea processing. But, uh, you know, all those different shapes, they, they allow the leaves when, they, when they're steeping in the hot water to uh, release different flavors at slightly different times depending on their oxidation. So I've got my ingenuity I know, I here. I know that it smells good. I can tell that it smells good, George. I just wish I could smell it. Well, you know, this is one of the failings of the internet. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna put this on here and you'll see that it starts to go down and it's like a little ratchet under here. So this is really cool. And you can do this over your favorite mug. Um, obviously you can do it like I'm doing it with iced tea. Um, and so this is a great little brewing mechanism. Um, and, uh, and then I do, when it's done, I just put it down and it doesn't leak or anything like that. I've got all the tea in there. Now comes the fun part, we can shake it down. Make sure the lid's on well so you don't spray it all over yourself. I can tell you about that one from experience. All righty. So all shook down and we're just gonna pour it right in there. We're almost ready to nourish our happy. But you know, the ritual of making tea is beautiful. I mean, it's, it's that water tea and time that Trish talked about, and that's all that we, we've done here today. And uh, we got it in a nice glass and a stainless steel straw, which you can get at the tea house. You know, it feels rude to be drinking in front of everybody, enjoying something wonderful, and you all don't get to share it. Um, but uh, it's too bad. Anyway, it's delicious. It's um, uh, the, the ginger hits you kind of up front, and then you have a nice linger. You can taste the black tea. You can taste the ginger in there is, is a nice linger, and it's, uh, it's super refreshing. Um, and that's how easy it is. I mean, normally, if you're brewing a pot of tea at home, and it's hot tea, three minutes, what did that take me an extra 30 seconds to shake it down and make some really refreshing iced tea from loose leaf tea? And your, your folks there, your folks there can also tell you like pairing wine, pairing teas is also a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. I was trying to think of some great things I would eat with your, um, with your drink and I would actually do something with like Thai and Indian foods because mm -hmm. you can't really pair that with wines and beers don't do them well. So you really want a, a tea like that. That's like the perfect thing to do if you're making a, Asian dish and pork right. dishes and things like cherry pies. They're so yep. much better nice. with a tea like what you're showing us versus some other kind of beverage. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, and our whole, all our, um, <clears throat> when we get closer to the holidays, we talk a lot about pairing teas. Um, and uh, one of the things I like to make is a Lapsang Suchong brine turkey. Um, that would be a, make a, another great episode here on Foodie Talk for sure. Um, before we run out of time, um, I'm going to talk about my steep and go. So again, um, it's been cold brewing um, about an hour and 15 minutes. So you can see it's already uh, changed color. Um, the leaves have uh, saturated themselves and are sunk to the bottom. And what's great is it's just you're on the go and so Himalayan gold is great. It's a black tea, so we'll have caffeine. Um, this tea uh, has um, you know, starts out as a little, the most little squashy in flavor, and then the linger, it'll almost go a little chocolatey, which is kind of fun. Um, very subtle, um, and it's great hot and iced, and it steeps well and nice with the cold brew. So, um, oh, can I ask a question about the caffeine? Absolutely. Is the caffeine in your tea, in the tea, is like if you did a cold brew coffee versus a cold brew tea with a black tea, mm -hmm. it'd be like half or the same, or what? Well, tea, caffeine is, is complicated in tea because it has to do with a lot of times the season that it's plucked. And, you know, spring teas, spring pluckings have more caffeine than fall pluckings. And uh, caffeine, the caffeine in the plant is the defense mechanism 
for bugs right. and things like that. So that's why there is caffeine. So spring growth has more caffeine than, 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 than um, but the cold brew will pull out less because heat, you know, the heat in the hot water draws out more. So in general, I always say tea has about half the caffeine of a regular coffee. And this would probably have about half of that. But, uh, but if it sits, you know, long, like sometimes I'll drink this down. And then if I'm on the road on a road trip and I just get as much cold water in there as I can, but it's not ice cold, um, I'll, I'll feel the caffeine come out because with the warmer brew. Yeah, there's a lot of people that don't want all the caffeine of coffee, but they want something like that. So it's a mm -hmm. good alternative. Yeah. If someone wants alternative. Delicious. Yes, it is delicious. I mean, it, and it's, it, 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 there's a subtlety of flavor that comes out when the water is cold versus when the water is hot. And um, if you take, yeah, so if you, there's, um, if you drink some of the Japanese green teas, if you brew it, um, you know, at 180 degrees, 190 degrees, it's very different flavor if you drink, if you brew it at about 160, 140 degrees. That temperature swing, and the cooler the temperature, the more umami flavor you get. Oh, I didn't know so, that. Yes. I love yep. it. And um, actually, I should have done it, but I didn't do it today. There's a, there's, a, there's a technique called shinobi cha. So if you take ice and you sprinkle, uh, usually we do it with gyakuro, which is a high-end Japanese shade-grown green tea, and you sprinkle that on top, and it takes a couple hours. But as that ice melts, it steeps with the green tea, and it drips down, so it's like a cold drip system. And if you really want to isolate the umami flavor, it's like, I mean, you drink about that much. And it's like just a wave of umami. And it's a great way for finally understanding what umami is because it's not part of, you know, kind of our, the European culture that we've all come from. Um, uh, and so it's hard to describe what that is. But if you want to know what umami is, do shinobi cha. And you can look it up. Uh, if you come in, the Leafsters will tell you how to do it. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, but it really isolates that umami flavor. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, George. And oh, you're all welcome. of this, all of the stuff is in the uh, chat. At the tea house and, and online, uh, the ginger peach, it's uh, 445 an ounce. Um, and so you can you know, buy it by the ounce. And uh, an ounce, if you're making a, a cup of tea, an ounce will make about seven cups of tea. It's, and you can do your measurements that way. And the uh, Nepal Himalayan gold is $7.95 an ounce. Um, we've got that online and in tea house as well. Um, and whatever tea you get, whether online or in store, we always put the brew instructions. That's really important. And just a one last thing, we have rack cards about how to make iced tea. It talks about flash chill that I just did. Um, and so uh, that's a, a great way to, uh, you know, when you lack the patience of brewing it and putting it in the refrigerator and waiting three hours, um, this is a great way to do it. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Back that you, was Trish. so Thank you. that was so cool. If you don't know about the Leafsters, you need to go in and talk to them because mm -hmm. they know everything. Um, okay, so don't forget to put your name and your email address in the chat so we can get you entered in the drawing if you just joined. And we're moving on to our last person on our foodie panel tonight, which is Susan Kirkpatrick from Savory Spice Shop. Hi, Susan. Wave. Savory spice. <laughs> Do you have to say that very often? Yes. Savory spice shop. It's kind of like something to see if you're drunk or not, right? You can find out. Um, savory spice shop, shop specializes in flavorful spices, simple meal solutions, gift sets, and other tasty products to help you live a life full of meaningful moments, delightful experiences, and of course, flavorful food. They strive to remain innovative and provide a fun, inspiring, and educational environment for customers and employees. Susan, by the way, if you haven't met her and you don't know, they're having their ninth anniversary in Fort Collins, the Savory Spice Shop. Today is the ninth anniversary. Can't believe it. Congratulations. Thank you. And Susan, if you haven't met her, I'm sure that you have if you've been in the shop. Um, has been in Fort Collins for 40 years and has an illustrious career in a whole different area of life and was actually the mayor of Fort Collins. So um, she's had many, many lives as a professional woman. And now we're lucky to have her talking about the Savory Spice Shop. Wait, let me give you their hours. Monday through Thursday, 
They are open now, by the way, downtown Fort Collins. In fact, they're right around the corner from the cooking studio. We're located inside the Opera Galleria, kind of in the back. And we run over to the savory spice shop all the time. They're like our pantry for spices. So we don't, we're always over there buying. Um, anyhow, Monday through Thursday, 10 to 6, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday, they're 10 to 5 and Sunday, 11 to 5. So there's a time there for everybody. Okay, Susan, take it away. Thank you very much, Trish. And, uh, you know, the wonderful thing about this, there are lots of challenges of a virtual foodie walk, foodie talk. But one of the things is I've never been to foodie walk because I'm always working at the store. So I've never had a chance <laughs> to see the demos at uh, the cupboard or at um, Happy Lucky's. And it's just wonderful. I, I'm so impressed by my fellow um, panelists. So um, my hope is that I will help you figure out what to do with some of those vegetables, aside from making your veggie tot, your um, zucchini tots. Um, many of us are so happy to be in late August because that's when the bounty of vegetables comes to our um, door. And maybe sometimes even in your own garden. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what to do with vegetables. Um, even if you have a great appetite for vegetables, sometimes it can get overwhelming. So I've got some suggestions for you. And I'm, I made a uh, PowerPoint presentation that um, I'm going to share with everybody. Uh, and let's see. Okay, this is, the only thing I need to do is figure out how to make it be full screen. Uh, I can see it just fine. Okay. Well, calling this veg out. It's uh, <laughs> simply enjoying your summer and fall vegetables. Um, at Savory Spice, we love uh, having people come in the store and that oftentimes they'll say, um, what do you have for chicken? Or I'm making root vegetables or salad and I'm just uh, needing some new flavor. So um, we recently created a three pack um, called Veg Out and it contains three um, containers of vegetable seasonings. One we call country onion herb, um, another sweet sesame stir fry, and the third These all come separately, but you can buy them in a three pack. And I've started to give them as hostess gifts. Um, the three pack is actually $27.95, but individually the, the containers are $9.95 and the sesame is $10.95. Um, I love these seasonings for herb salads. You can use simple greens, peppery, mild, or bitter uh, with nuts, um, maybe um, a little bit of fruit and some good olive oil and uh, balsamic vinegar from the Rocky Mountain Olive Oil, which is also our neighbor um, and locally owned. And somehow your dull salad has gone to a, a whole new level. We also have another idea for um, some of the delicious uh, Olathe sweet corn that's around. Um, we have, for a limited time only, a Mexican street corn seasoning. Uh, I made it the other night with my grandchildren. You uh, partially uh, husk the corn, take out the silk, um, put on lots of mayonnaise and a little bit of uh, Mexican cheese, add the Mexican street corn seasoning and put it um, on your grill for about 15 minutes. And it's good enough for a whole meal. Um, you'll never eat the Olathe sweet corn without it again, but I, it is a limited time. We only have it till the middle of September. And when summer goes away, so does our Mexican street corn seasoning. We also have simple ideas for garden vegetables. 
Um, in this instance, I've shown a picture of uh, the green beans from the garden with a little bit of walnut and um, some, some olive oil and uh, this Capitol Hill seasoning. It's our best seller. In fact, so many people love it that we call it crack. Um, and <laughs> it's, it's just a delicious seasoning. You don't really have to have a recipe, and that's one of the things that's surprising to people, um, that sprinkling is just a marvelous habit. If you have some flavorful seasonings and some fresh vegetables, you can sprinkle and your meal is completely uh, different and delicious. Can I, can I just support you in that, Susan, and tell everyone, like people say, I need a recipe for green beans or I need a recipe for broccoli. And it's like, no, you don't. Just steam it, honor the flavor of the vegetable and sprinkle it. Yes. Honestly, people will think you did something fantastic or genius and you could just smile and put the, put the spice jar in the cupboard. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's the sunshine that we need um, to grow the vegetables. Uh, simple preparation like steaming or sauteing or roasting um, or grilling, simple with a little bit of olive oil and a nice seasoning. And you can vary them and before you know it, you're having vegetables every night and even the kids will eat them. Another suggestion that I have, and um, uh, this is just the most fun in the world, is um, to pickle some vegetables. Use, again, simple ingredients, um, carrots in the, in the case of this recipe, just carrots, cider vinegar, water, salt. And we carry pickling spice and minced onion and minced garlic that are dried. Uh, you can make a refrigerator pickle with this simple recipe. You don't need to use a, a hot bath or anything. You do have to eat them within a short period of time, but honestly, they are so delicious that um, uh, they won't hang around and you don't need to go through the whole pickling process. Mind you, I would say that if you want to become a pickler extraordinaire, you can go see <laughs> the um, the folks at the cupboard and they will set you up and help you learn to be excellent at your- We should have, we should have a certificate, the certificate pickler extraordinaire. Yes, well- um, A button. Pickling vegetables. I mean, the, when I see a vegetable, I think, oh, just give me a chance to pickle that guy. And before you know it, you um, have a, a, a treat that's a snack or um, a side dish. Pickled vegetables are like the best. Can I, can I just interject that every single one of the chefs in the cooking studio, as well as most of the chefs in town, pickle vegetables and put them in everything. They put them in salsas, they put them in salads, they put their, like, if you go, if you go to any place or you talk to a chef and say, do you ever do pickles, quick pickles, pickles, refrigerated, you know, vegetables, every single one of them will say, of course I do, because yeah. they're so fantastic. And you don't have to be a professional chef. No, uh, no. And it's a fun thing to do with kids, um, Jim and Mike, uh, at the cupboard. And um, I'm thinking about pickling with tea. George, sometime we'll have to do some pairings. Of For sure. Pickles and tea. Oh, Another yeah. great option with your vegetable bounty are soups. Uh, we have a thousand recipes on our website. And if you just put in the word soup, you will come up with lots of choice. And in this case, I've shown you a picture of one of my favorites, which is done in a slow cooker with pumpkin. And it uses just a small quantity of our coastal bay seasoning, which I'll give you an insight is, is uh, old bay seasoning, but we're not allowed to call it that because that's a proprietary name, but it tastes just like old bay seasoning. And some fresh parsley. Um, you can doll up soups with uh, bacon on the side or parsley and uh, uh, just have the flavor of uh, fresh food with very simple ingredients. 
So soups are another way to use great your, your vegetable bounty. Um, so you can tell that I love talking and thinking about food and eating. Um, and so do my employees. So uh, beware, if you come see us, we'll talk your ear off or listen to what you're making. Every day we learn new things from our, from our customers. Um, it's just the most fun to talk about cooking and eating and the options in downtown Fort Collins. I mean, where else can you go in a town our size and have the number of choices for outstanding uh, culinary uh, options. So come see us. Um, and if you order online at our store, if you spend $49, I'll ship it to you for free. We still do curbside pickup. We're never going to get rid of that after the pandemic taught us how easy it was. Um, so come see us. Oh, Susan, <laughs> thank you so much. That was that was really nice. You can stop sharing your screen if you want to. Okay, I'll try to do it. So Absolutely. I don't know. I'm not looking at the chat. Does anybody have questions that I should be bringing up? I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Um, maybe you have a question. You have a chance to put it in here for one of our panelists. I can tell you that is the the cooking studio. We don't sell products, we just teach cooking. And we use products from all three of these wonderful people. And if you walk into any one of their stores, you are going to get an earful of just the best advice, like high quality, they really know what they're doing. You just can't get more personal attention in any city, I've traveled extensively and I have to tell you, these three know what they're talking about and they're right there in your backyard um right on main street and sort of off of main street on walnut street <laughs> we're all but, downtown all downtown yeah, we're all, we're downtown. all downtown. downtown i know the cookie studio never gets to participate in foodie walk either because we always have cooking classes on the nights that they happen but uh, i hope we'll see you all there i think we've seen a lot of you already in cooking studio so please come and I have the drawing I have the name so the person who won the hundred and twenty five dollar more than that gift basket tonight is Alex Semps it's S-E-N-F-T Alex you're the winner you get it yay and thank you Alex thank you so much for coming everyone and um, I hope we get to do this again sometime because this was a ton of fun. Trish, where do they pick up the gift basket? Where does Alex? I don't know. I think I have to look at it here. I think I think uh, the crew will give that. Will contact them from their email and, and okay. let them know where to pick it okay. up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and I think that'll happen. So actually, you know, this is going to happen next month, the third Friday of the month. There'll be another virtual foodie walk, and it'll be you know maybe three other foodie walk partners so be on the lookout it could be the welsh rabbit or nuanced chocolate could be the grilling crew over at ace hardware um could be rocky mountain olive oil uh, oh my god and it makes me so proud to know that these people are all mm -hmm. my colleagues yeah. in fort collins yeah so there's there's 12 Seriously. of us as part of the foodie walk so next week will be or next month will be three different ones different different businesses sharing some unique Deep things. So, uh, okay. So any last virtual. words, uh, Jim and Michael? You have to unmute yourself. Oh, so. they've got a zucchini. They're oh. showing us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, bring everybody. It, Great to bring see it on you. down. All right. All right. Good night, everybody. All right. Thank you all. Bye. All right. Enjoy. Thanks. Mm. We are.